put my fingers right in there and I go straight back and up towards my trap and I rub. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Perry from Stop Chasing Pain. Thank you so much for tuning into the video. You're gonna see about a 30 minute clip of a two day intensive 16 hour course that we teach all about the lymphatic system called Body Aquarium Lymphatic Mojo. This is gonna focus on the first three parts of the neck that we assess to see if somebody has a stagnated, overburdened lymphatic system. The first one is gonna be underneath and on top of the collarbone. Second is gonna be behind the angle of the jaw, right below the lobe of the ear at the largest lymph node in the neck. And then underneath submandibular, submental, that's below the jaw and the chin. I'll show you working on a patient and then how you can check these on yourself. I'll tell you now, these might be surprisingly tender, if not painful. Go easy, go light. That does mean it needs work if you find it painful and puppy. You'll also discover that just by checking them the way that I show you, we'll start to open those channels up and they can begin to flow. Also, please make sure you check out our other lymphatic videos on here, the big six. I'm gonna put it up at the top of the screen with the link as the video goes. And our morning flow routine, both of those have gone pretty viral. Also, at the end of this video, you'll see a picture that was the two-hour self-care home video that you can purchase and stream anytime you want. Now, starting at the collarbone is the very first place that I work for everyone, no matter what they have, because this is the lowest pressure, remember, for lymphatics and veins. This is the main drain. If it gets tight and tense in here, you can slow down the drain. This is an area where there's a lot of connective tissue that sits here known as fascia. A particular one that sits here, you're gonna see more tomorrow when we talk about the lung pump and the lung release is called Simpson's fascia. And Simpson's fascia is connective tissue that sits like this over the collarbone, and here's a little piece of paper to represent it. It's almost like a tent, and its job is to control pressure from the neck to the pressure difference in the chest and the lungs. So it's considered a diaphragm because it helps control pressure. That's really important for you to understand because pressure controls how fluids move, right? And this is an area very prone to tightness because of poor posture that people do. Also poor breathing mechanics. We'll, we'll talk about more tomorrow when we do some diaphragm releases lower. People overuse these muscles, which causes excess tension here and it clamps down. So think about this drain sitting here is my hand. The drain would be compromised like this. It's not going to completely shut down because you'd be dead. But if it's supposed to be this big, it goes this big day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, until our tolerance level gets passed, a threshold level gets passed, and then symptoms start to show up. So clinically, one of the first things that you need to look for as a clinician or as a human being is puffiness, swelling, or inflammation above the collarbone. Normally, this space should have a little recess to it, if you see it here, because I can see the outline of my collarbone, and this is called your upper trapezius muscle, and this is your cervical spine, and you have, if she turns her head to the side, this muscle pops out called your sternocleidomastoid muscle. You have this belly, and then you have another belly behind it here, and you have your scalene muscles, and they sit deep. Not that you need to know what they are, but they help with breathing. So people that have had neck tightness or tension or poor posture like this, what happens is this area becomes puppy. Rather than seeing a little indentation here, it actually raises up. Some people, it actually looks visibly like a pocket of fluid, almost like there's a raised egg up underneath here. If you see a lot of puffiness and swelling above the collarbone, you know 
there is a there is a pretty significant severe lymphatic system drain issue throughout the whole body and you will be having some type of issue we're going to help you with tomorrow and the sternum itself the rib cage or the lungs that sit up underneath it and along the spine there's usually a deep deep lymphatic block right behind the sternum that you're going to have to clear in order to get this to ultimately drain okay so first thing look for puffiness and swelling and excess tension above the collarbone now we start with the zero going underneath so i'm going to show you how you would do this to another person <clears throat> and then you can do it to yourself underneath the collarbone there's a muscle and this muscle when it gets tight it pulls down on the collarbone it pulls down on the first rib of your body that sits right here. So I'm on her first rib here and here. When that gets tight, it pulls these down. And when it pulls this down, it clamps the drain. You got it? So what we need to do is check for tenderness or inflammation in that muscle. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. One, I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm going to put them underneath the collarbone right here. So here's the shoulder. This is the shoulder. Shoulder. I'm going to go right in front of the shoulder and underneath the collarbone there. And I'm going to press back and up. So I'm actually going in this direction towards the trapezius here, scraping underneath the collarbone. And I'll work all the way towards this first space between the collarbone and the sternum. That can get puffy, swollen, and inflamed as well. Many people will be very surprised at how painful this is. So I'll come here. How are you feeling in there today? Great. Not great. So I usually will ask people, and I'll tell them this. Let me know if there's pain and if there's discomfort. And if so, you know, how much it is, right? If I don't notice a jump or a startle, then it's in my world, it's not a big deal. Then I'm gonna move on to the next one and I'm gonna check the opposite side. I'll check, we always do one spot on one side and we do the exact same reciprocal spot on the other for a reason because I want them to be able to feel immediately how does one compare to the other is one worse than the other are they both not great or are they both okay now i'll show you how you can get up underneath there a little bit easier <clears throat> if i'm a clinician or i'll show you how you do it to yourself in a moment i'm going to put my hand underneath that shoulder and i'm going to lift it forward and up a little bit and when i do that I form this little gap underneath the collarbone and I'll stick my finger underneath there now and it goes in a lot further. I'm aiming towards the neck. Okay? Sometimes I can do them together at the same time and you work your way towards the center. That will automatically open up this drain. Okay. Now we go supraclavicular. Supra goes above the collarbone right here in that pocket. This one you have to go easy on because there's not a lot of tissue here and there's delicate nerves, arteries and veins that run here. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure to make a difference here. I'm gonna show you the same thing. I'm gonna lightly put pressure, but I don't want you to press and hold in that region for a long period of time because you're gonna choke off the blood flow to the brain from the carotid artery and the vertebral artery and block the veins coming down. Okay, don't do that. Then I'm gonna tap. And now I'm going down, down towards the feet and rubbing here. This is a really important spot, everybody, because there's a couple of things that reside here. You lift your head up, you see that muscle pop out. That's called your sternocleidomastoid muscle. 
I'm going to come just in front of that here. So you can see the demarcation and I'm going to go here. So behind that muscle right here, right, is a nerve called your vagus nerve. It sits right there. The vagus nerve, you can relax, is cranial nerve number 10. If you're familiar with vagus nerve work, you may see that a lot on Facebook and Instagram and social media a lot because that's the nerve that helps relax people and calm them down and take them out of fight or flight. It goes down the side of the neck here and exits along the thorax below to wrap around your esophagus to go down to your belly here. That's a trap point. This is where it gets stuck a lot, particularly if your lymphatic drains are stuck. So if you have backflow and lymph here, you irritate the vagus nerve with those cytokines, those inflammatory things that we mentioned before. Behind that is a nerve called your phrenic nerve. And your phrenic nerve arises from bone nerves in your neck, C3, C4, C5. C stands for cervical. That's the vertebra in your neck. You have seven bones in your neck. Three, four, and five supply the phrenic nerve. And the phrenic nerve is the motor nerve, the movement nerve for the diaphragm. That's the muscle here that when you breathe in and out, contracts and relaxes to move the pump of lymph below, give you increased pressure here, decreased pressure here, so fluid gets sucked up from the abdomen towards the drain for veins and for lymph. So what I'm telling you is this, if you have a clogged drain here, that can irritate the phrenic nerve, and then the phrenic nerve become compromised, and that influences the movement of the diaphragm, which can influence your breathing here, which changes the lymphatic pump here. It changes the pressure here, and that leads to more stagnation here. That's why you have to work down here in order to help any issues in the neck. <clears throat> Did you understand that? Okay. And in this region, that's the main lymphatic drain. Okay, and you have right side and you have left side. So if I come forward again, when I press in here, I'm gonna influence those nerves as well. I can also get deeper inside of that region if I lift up the shoulder forward and I bring it up, I create that pocket again. You see that pocket? When I do that, I'm actually helping the drain suck the fluid down so I can come here and rub and move. How are you feeling there? Not bad, right? I could tell she's okay. And then while I'm here, I could just check both together. Easy peasy, right? And we'll check the same thing on the other side. And then we'll show you how you do it to yourself. A little bit more here. So she's got some tightness or tension and congestion here. All right. So I know I'm going to need to open that up. So I'm going to mark on my sheet for her left side infraclavicular, left side supraclavicular. But this drain already opened up. So now what's happening is anything in the neck is starting to make its way down. Anything in the armpit is starting to make its way up just because I opened up pressure here. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to show you spot number two, and then I'll change the camera angle, and I'll show you how you do it to yourself. Spot number two is part two of the big six. It's right behind the angle of the jaw, below the lobe of the ear, in front of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Lift your head up for me. See the muscle pop out? It's going to be in front of that, behind the angle of the jaw, right there. You can relax. That's the largest lymph node in the neck. Huge. That's also a major point where the vagus nerve drops here to continue going down here. This is the exit point, that's the entry point. 
If the lymph node gets swollen here, the vagus nerve gets compromised there. This is also the main blood flow route to the brain and the main blood flow route away from the brain. And it's also where you have a big part of your sympathetic nervous system that sits in through here, um, what's called your cervical ganglia. Don't worry about that. We'll get into that later. But what I'm trying to tell you is this, inflammation here, block here, inflammation block here, you compromise flow, blood to the brain, away from the brain, you cause inflammation around these sympathetic chain ganglia in the neck, and that causes you to have pain in your head, neck, face, anything in relationship to that, and you can get a lot of headaches as well, and you just clog the main brain toilets to get backed up so you can't drain waste from the brain, right? I see this super swollen in a lot of people, almost like I'm looking at a chipmunk throwing nuts in their mouth. That's not good. This gets a lot of swelling when people who have TMJ issues, if they have periodontal work, like a root canal, a wisdom tooth pull, periodontal disease, gum disease, anything like that, you got to work this stuff up under here a ton an absolute ton. And I'm even a contend to you that maybe one of the reasons you got all that stuff is because you've had clogged lymph for years that turned into an infected tooth and cavities because each tooth has its own individual lymphatic channel that drains to underneath here, down here. And if stuff can't get out of the tooth, it stays in the tooth and then you get bacteria, toxins and gum disease. And we now know that stuff travels from the gums and the teeth and the mouth systemically through the body and causes arthritis or rheumatoid inflammation in peripheral joints like the knee. Everything is connected, okay? That's why you can't just look at your inflamed knee and not look at the lymph nodes in the neck. That's a big, big mistake. So same thing, I'm gonna go here, do not press and hold pressure here because you're gonna block the artery and vein. Light pressure, light touch. Then I'm gonna push in here and move around. She's pretty good. You're gonna know it if that one hurts. So here is in front of the SCM. Here is behind the SCM. Guys, catch that, lift your head up a little bit. In front, behind. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now rub. And if I want, I can do both together. Do you feel a difference from one side to the other? You're actually, she's good in here. She doesn't have any problem in this one. Okay. And now everything from here is draining down into here. And now things from underneath the jaw and underneath the chin are starting to come towards here and go down because you already opened these up right? Because high pressure at the top, low pressure at the bottom. So we clear from bottom up. How do you do it to yourself? I don't care which side you start on. It's up to you as long as you do both sides. I usually start on the left because this is where most of the lymph drains. And this is where your heart is located more towards the left, but it doesn't matter to me. Right? I'm going to take my fingers put them underneath the collarbone. I'm rolling this forward and up so you can see it. There's my shoulder joint. Put my fingers right in there and I go straight back and up towards my trap and I rub. I go towards the center right here underneath the clavicle right to the space at the sternum. Rub there. That's gonna hurt on a lot of people. That gets inflamed when people have upper respiratory or sinus issues or face issues here. Then check the same thing on the other side. Lightly tap, come up underneath, and put pressure. Move your shoulder accordingly. Then we go above. See supraclavicular above? It should be nice and open, not puppy and swollen. I'm going to take my fingers above, tap in front of the trap, press in and then push down towards the feet and then move. 
So this is just an assessment. I'm not doing any particular lymphatic technique here, even though you're moving lymph, okay? Then I'm gonna check the other side. And this is the spot that you work when we teach you to do big six. If you've seen my big six at all, if you haven't, you're gonna learn it. You're going to go below and above the collarbone. That's what you're moving. You're opening up this drain. Spot number two, go behind the angle of the jaw right here. Lightly put your fingers, tap, press, rub in different directions. See what it feels like. Move your head in any direction you need to to feel it, either away from it or towards it. Don't overthink it. Feel it. Feel first, think second. Then do the other side. These are the ones that sometimes your doctor will actually check if you go in to see if you're quote unquote sick, but they're supposed to get swollen when you're sick. Why? Because the lymph is trying to trap stuff and kill stuff that's trying to kill you. So your lymphatic system is supposed to get swollen. It's not supposed to stay that way, right? If this is blocked, your brain is a hot mess. You might not know it yet, but it's coming. Then we're going to go submandibular, submental. Submandibular, below the jawline. And then mental. You start from the back. I'm going to place my fingers underneath the angle of the jaw, and I'm going to lightly tap moving forward. These muscles are super duper tight on a lot of people. Why? Most people have dysfunctional breathing and their mouth stays open all day because they're mouth breathers during the day or at night. These muscles open the jaw. So they're constantly what? Tight. And tight tissue doesn't accept blood flow well and it stagnates lymphatics. That's why you need to keep your mouth closed, tongue at the roof of the mouth, the whole thing, breathe in and out through your nose. But here's the thing, everybody. It's really hard to breathe through your nose when you have congested lymphatics because congested lymphatics cause excess mucus production in the throat, in the mouth, and clogs the sinuses so I can't freaking breathe through my nose. I know that because that happened to me. I had for so many years, I, I, would, I would teach, and I was doing this every five seconds. I was snipping, or I would <clears throat> constant phlegm all the time. People thought it was a nervous tick, and it's bothersome. And I noticed it when I looked at videos of people recording me. I'm going, oh, my goodness. That's because I had to. And I, I couldn't sleep at night with, with without my mouth open because I couldn't breathe. And I have to tell you, when I started to do my lymphatics, within two weeks, for the first time in probably 15 years, I could breathe through my nose. I wasn't clearing my throat because my immune system wasn't producing all that mucus to try to coat things because why was it doing that? Because the muck and the bacteria and the toxins couldn't get out. So a strategy to deal with that is the body coats it. It, it doesn't produce mucus because it's bored. It produces mucus for protection. What the hell is it trying to protect you from? Invasion, waste, muck. It's an immune system response, right? That makes sense? So you can probably change your breathing significantly here. Start from underneath here and work forward. And when you get up underneath, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to freaking hurt because these are stuck in most people. Go right to the angle of the chin right here and rub. Then I want you to work backwards. So go from the back, work towards the front, then work up under here and go backwards. These are really stuck when you have brain fog. 
Same on the other side, come up underneath the angle. There's one, see the face? There it is. So I'm checking that I'm not gonna push that hard when I treat it. That doesn't hurt now, right? I'm not gonna push that hard when I treat it, but I have to assess it. Cause eventually when I free that up, I can press in there a lot harder and I already am and it feels better, right? Like just that, I could double my pressure and I'll work towards underneath here and I'll work backwards. That already feels better. Okay. Some people may already start to drain in the sinuses. Submandibular, submental. Now I'm gonna go temporomandibular jaw. Turn it this way. I'm gonna get my skull so you know what you're looking at here. This is a side view of her, okay? This is a fake skull, by the way, <laughs> colors on it. This is your cheekbone. The technical term is your zygomatic arch, okay? Below that, you can see that's the angle of your jaw. This is your temporomandibular joint and a muscle sits here called your masseter. Lymph, we're gonna start right here below that bone and work our way down. And we're gonna end underneath the jaw. If you wanna know where that muscle is, put your hand on your cheek, clench your jaw, and it'll pop out underneath your hand. Now, when people are under stress, they clench or they grind. When they clench or they grind, they tense that muscle up. What do you think they compromise here? lymph and blood flow, and then this is where stuff gets stuck. You would take your fingers, put it underneath the cheekbone, and then tap along the cheek down towards the angle. And now add a little bit more pressure, like you're massaging that. Stay more towards the back, because you have your parotid gland here, your salivary gland, and that can be sensitive. And I'm gonna end underneath the angle of the jaw. You're pretty good there. Okay. Then we do the other side. <clears throat> okay. She may have a little bit more here because she was a little congested under the right. So this one is probably gonna be congested. Why? Why would that happen? Because when this is congested, these can't go past that well. So then the tank backflows up here. Do you follow? Now I'm just gonna see. Yep, right there. That's it, right there. Oh, I'm right on it. Now I'm gonna ease it up though, okay? Ease it up. Don't cause pain when you're on it. Because listen, everybody, if stuff can't drain here, of course that muscle's gonna be ticked off because it can't get blood flow in and it can't get waste out, it's gonna stay inflamed, right? And it's gonna hurt. All right, so I would mark on her right side, what, temporomandibular was an issue, right side for her, the submandibular, that already feels way better here. And then she had an issue on that left, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, right? <clears throat> so you have underneath and then here. Can you flip the light? I'll show you how you do it to yourself. How's everybody doing, all right? <clears throat> okay. That's the angle. I don't care how you do it. If you want to use your thumb, if you want to use your fingers, if you want to use the opposite hand, Okay, do whatever you feel like doing. So I'm gonna use my finger just so you can see. I'm underneath it here and I'm pressing straight up, feeling along that tissue towards the chin. And I'm gonna work my way back. And I got a good one right there. 
Now, I'm not staying and I'm not working it. I'm just assessing right now. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. There's one. Usually what you'll note is that sometimes when this one is blocked, this one here will be blocked. But not always, because the body can do whatever the hell it wants to do. Yeah, this side I definitely got blocked. As you can hear, I've got a little sinus congestion on here because I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. 